Okay, so hello and welcome to this uh, video tutorial for E411 uh, statics and dynamics of simple mechanisms. So we have this problem here. It says um, if the coefficient of static friction between the crate with uh, a mass of 150 kilos and the ground is 0.3, uh, determine the minimum coefficient of static friction between the man's shoes and the ground so that the man who is 80 kilos can move the crate. So um, uh, at first this might seem like, like a complicated question, but actually it's really not. Um, it's just a case of doing what you might have experienced in previous problems just twice. So it's as you might typically um, start, you would start by drawing a free body diagram, um, except uh, there are two kind of free body diagrams that we can draw in this problem. Uh, there's the one for the crate uh, and there's one for the man. Um, we can go through this step by step. So first of all, let's, let's do one for the crate. Uh, so it's of mass 150 kilos. So uh, let's describe that as 150 G uh, and let's describe that as NC, uh, normal uh, force of the crate. Uh, and it's got this diagonal force here uh, acting from um, the man who's pulling. Let's just call that uh, force F. And then to kind of counter that F force, we've got uh, the frictional force. <laughs> Uh, which we can describe as 0.3 uh, nc. Okay, so this is the free body diagram we have for our crate. Let's go ahead and solve it then. Um, so resolving horizontally, uh, let's consider things acting to the uh, right. I've ignored um, the geometry uh, here. So let's add that 30 degree angle in there. Okay, so um, acting to the right then we have the uh, horizontal component of that F force, so let's call it F cos 30. Uh, things acting to the left, we have uh, this 0.3 nc. Okay, um, is this solvable? No? Okay, let's move on then. Uh, let's resolve vertically. So things moving up, we have the normal force, uh, we have the uh, vertical component of uh, our F force, things moving down, we have that 150 G force. Okay, um, so uh, by inspection, this just becomes a simultaneous equations problem. Um, what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna do a substitution method. Um, I'm gonna go about it like this. So I'm just gonna multiply, um, I'm going to, in effect, divide by 0.3 or um, multiply by 1 over 0.3, same thing, um, to get rid of this, this 0.3 coefficient so that I can then express nc in terms of f uh, and then substitute it into uh, this second equation here, which will then allow me to solve through. Um, so let's just write up here, divide by 0.3. Okay. Uh, so that leaves me with F over 0.3. Uh, apologies for my handwriting. So I've divided the left-hand side by 0.3, and I've, uh, when I divide the right-hand side by 0.3, I get NC. Uh, so I'm going to kind of take that, uh, and I'm going to substitute into this second equation here. So I'm going to substitute that in for NC. Uh, I'm also, uh, we, we can see that this, this NC term would just transform into this term here, this F over 0.3 cos 30. I'm going to do two steps in one and I'm going to factorize for F. So I'm going to say this left hand side is equal to F um, cos 30 over 0.3 plus uh, sine 30 is equal to 150g. Um, I can therefore say then, let's move this down a bit. Oops. Um, I can therefore say uh, that F 
is equal to 150G over this bracket here. So uh, cos 30 over 0.3 plus sine 30. And when I put that into my calculator, oh, that was drawn poorly, but whatever. Um, when I put that into my calculator, I get, uh, I get 434 newtons. Okay, 434 newtons. Uh, great, so um, I don't really need to solve for the normal force NC um, because the question's asking um, for the coefficient of static friction between this guy's shoes and the floor. Um, and this F, uh, this F force kind of carries over to the free body diagram for the man, um, but this NC doesn't, so it's kind of irrelevant. Um, so I'm just going to move on and draw the free body diagram for the dude. Uh, let's pick, uh, let's pick this up and move it over to. Um, The bottom left, the bottom right, sorry, here. Okay, so um, the free body diagram for the dude. Uh, well, he's of mass uh, 80 kg. So let's describe that. Microsoft's not liking me today. There we go. Um, 80 g down. Uh, there's a normal force. Uh, let's call it... N M for man. Uh, there's F, which we defined earlier as 434. Um, I'm just going to call it F for now, even though we know its value. Uh, and the thing pulling him to the right is the frictional force. Let's call it mu S um, N M. Okay. Uh, right, so as uh, as we know how to do, let's let's resolve horizontally here. So um, things moving to the right, you've got this um, mu s n m is equal to uh, uh, again. I've forgotten the geometry. <laughs> uh, let's draw this out. So this is a thirty uh, degree angle here. Okay. Um, the reason I know that's a 30 degree angle, in case uh, you're unfamiliar with this idea, um, so we have this rope here that's at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Um, this diagonal line here, let's say that's the rope, um, and you've got this, this angle here, let's call it theta. Um, there's a rule that if this angle here is theta, then um, this angle here um, must also be theta or take the same value. Um, some people call it the Z rule because it looks like a Z, um, if you guys are unfamiliar with that idea. So we say that's 30 degrees there. Things acting to the right. Okay, we've just defined that. Things acting to the left, or well, we've got the horizontal component of that F force. So F cos 30. Uh, is this solvable? No, because there are two unknowns in here. We know F, but there are still two unknowns. Let's move on to resolving vertically then. So things moving up, N, M, uh, things moving down, uh, F sine 30 uh, plus 80G. Is this solvable? Yes, because we know F, so we can say then, uh, therefore, N M is equal to uh, four three four sine thirty plus eighty G, and when I put that in my calculator, I find that N M is equal to a thousand and one. So a thousand one newtons there. Okay, uh, now that I know N M, I can therefore say. That mu s, I'm just going to go ahead and do two steps in one here. I'm going to divide both sides by n m, and I'm going to substitute in this uh, this value. So I get mu of s is equal to um, 4, 3, 4, cos 30 over 
a thousand and one. And when I put that in my calculator, I get 0 0.375, uh, which looks like a reasonable value. Okay, um, so that's how you solve this problem. If you have any uh, questions or comments about this problem, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for watching.